Welcome back, everybody. I'm Nate Moore. This is Excel Video 509. I've been helping practices comply with the new Medicare credit balance rules. I built a tool for them, an easy spreadsheet to say, here's all your Medicare credit balances. Here's how old they are. Here's any patterns or what else, whatever else can help you distinguish what's going on there. Make it easy to refund the balances in a timely and appropriate manner. And just one less thing off your to-do list. If I can help make that process easier for your practice, I'd love to. We're going to play more with the data area here in 3D Map, but before we do, I'm going to close this tour window. We're going to talk more about tours, but now that we're a little more familiar with how, just down the lay of the land, look at how the workspace looks, let's have a little more room. So here I have a plot of my data in a stacked column, and before we get into these different options, let's just talk about this 100% just for a minute. See this mapping confidence report? What you can do is Excel is going to say, hey, you know what? We found all your all of your geographic data on Bing. So we're good to go. I'm not concerned about my map being accurate. If I didn't have zip codes, and, and Excel, even if I chart by county here, I, I've got enough to where Excel can say, yeah, I know where those are, or Bing can. If you just had city names, you're going to run into problems like oh, hey, I don't know which Washington this is. Is this Washington, D.C. or Washington State? Or there are a bunch of cities throughout the country named Washington. And Excel will give you its best guess in this mapping conference report of how accurate it thinks it is. I found the most success by putting zip codes here. But if you don't have zip codes and need to put cities or something else in there, just take a look at this mapping conference report and make sure you understand how confident Bing is in the geographic data it's presenting. That said, we've got a stacked column. We've done stacked columns and clustered columns before. And again, if you want more than one piece of data, the thing to do is to just add another piece of data there. And you can do stacked or clustered columns side by side as you look at the data. What I want to talk about today is let's spend a few minutes on bubbles. So instead of these, what I'm going to do is a bubble chart. And before I do, I'm going to take hospital and provider out. We'll just start with the basics. If I do this, then what the bubble chart will do, and maybe just put it up just a bit. See, maybe, yeah, something like that so you can see it. The bubbles show the relative size by zip codes. So here is 7,100. This is smaller. That's 2,700. That's a bit smaller. That's 1,190. And you can, by the size of the bubbles, get a feel for the size of your data using a bubble chart. Another thing you can do is add a category like hospital or provider. And now look what happens. Most of my data is either from a hospital or from a provider. But look at this area here or this area here. You see when I have multiple categories, I get a pie chart for a bubble instead of just a bubble in my data. And that's the trick to doing a bubble chart and then category. The other thing I want to review just briefly is here's the data. If you come down to layer options, there are different layer options for each of these different choices here. So if you come to layer options, what we want to do is play a bit. You can certainly change colors. If, if you don't like these colors, you can change the colors like we did when we had the column charts a while back. The opacity we're going to save for when we talk about layers, but size and thickness. What you can do is you can change the size of the bubbles. So if I went something like this, I mean, obviously they overlap like crazy, but you can see bigger bubbles if that helps you see the percentage here, the hospital versus provider or something like that. You can also change the thickness, which is not as big a deal. It's more, if you look at it, it's more of a 3D effect for what this is doing than much. So I'm going to leave that at 100%. And if I can't get close quick, then I tend to just type in the 100% and I'm happy. So Let's go back to layer options just for a second. What I want to do is I want to talk about size. Let's say that I get the size pretty close. Let's say I've got that that's right or whatever. And then watch what happens when I either scroll this way to zoom or I could do it with a plus and minus. See how the size of the bubbles changes as the scale of the map changes? If you like that, great. If you say, no, 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 look, I got the size the way I want, even if I change the scale as I, as I scroll around a map or pan around to get where I want to go, what you can do is you can lock the current scale, and now that's the size of my bubble. So as I move, I'm not going to see nearly the change that I would if I did this. See the difference between this 
Oh, now I'm way over here. And let's do something like, let's say that's about right. And I lock the current scale. And it doesn't do nearly the overlap. That's lock current scale. So once you get, you know, I want the map to look just about like this. And I drag it like that. That's what I'm looking for. You can lock the scale so the size of the bubble doesn't move as you change the scale. That's what I wanted to say about bubble charts. Stay tuned next time. Heat maps are next. Thanks for watching. Thank you.